Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's historic event. My name is Mike Carlo Jr., and I'm very humbled and honored to be here with you. I know what you're thinking, but no, tonight's not about me. We're not going to be talking about the things that I've done or hearing the many songs I've composed. Tonight, we're here to witness a battle between two candidates for the hearts of the people on the Standing Rock Reservation. In one corner, we have Reg Charging, the most humble, most sincere, most traditional man you can find here to lead the people. It's been prophesied that one day he would come and lead our people. One day he would come and save us. And his opponent, <coughs> Dave. We're gonna to start tonight by going over the rules. And there's only one rule. Each of you will be given a question. We'll take turns back and forth. Dave, you will have one minute to answer. Reg, you will have five and you'll also have three lifelines to use if you need help. Before we go any further though, the people, there's one question the people want to know. They want to see your braids. We're going to have a braid measuring contest. Whose is longer, Mike? Dave's is longer. Madaki Api, I'd like to remind everyone it's not about length, it's about girth. And if you look at this braid back here, it's pretty thick, okay? Dave's, this is Dave's. Tonight, before we get started with our questioning, we'll allow the, the candidates here to give their opening remarks. We'll start with you, Rich. Thank you, Mike. As a Standing Rock tribal member, I am blessed to be here. Before Dapple, I'm sorry, Mr. Dave Arshamble took over, Standing Rock, we were right here on the Great Meter. And after he took over, we're no longer great. So my plan, my 787 point plan, I would like to make Standing Rock great again, Madaki Api. And we're gonna go over that today. A lot of people said that after our pre-debate um, pictures were shown online that I could possibly be Dave's son. And I'm gonna show you that I'm his daddy, actually. So thanks for tuning in and uh, may the best man win. Mr. Arshamble? Yeah, I think it's a honor. I'm sorry, but we're out of time. We're gonna go straight to our questions. <laughs> okay, Reg, the first question is geared towards you. What would you do to improve tribal services? Uh, that's an important question, but what I think we really need to get to is that we need a new leader for this Water Is Life movement. As those two white people said on the Rock Report, this guy is not cut out for that job. And if we know anything about history, it's that the white people have all the answers for us as tribal members. So maybe he could answer that question. Okay. Same question. I, you know, with this, uh, with tribal services, what we try to do the past four years was to improve how our tribal programs manage their resources. So um, we did a lot of work with the accounting systems and the, the reporting and making sure we get our reports in, in on time so that the programs don't have to worry about uh, money. And we want them to be accountable. So uh, to improve our tribal services, the first thing we had to do is start with the, with the money. Where does it come from and where's it gonna go? And how do, we, how do we make sure those dollars that we're receiving from the federal government meet the people's needs? Now that we have a good handle on the finances with the tribe, we're gonna continue to... It's enough. Okay, time's up. I didn't hear anything you had to say. Moving on. Okay, Dave, what does nation building mean to you? Nation building is taking a look at all the resources that are within your lands and uh, doing an assessment on them and making the best uh, decisions and choices to develop those. Uh, on Standing Rock, we have a lot of different resources. We have land, we have water, we have people, we have uh, opportunities, we have a lot that, that's going for us. We have um, tourism, we have a history, a real rich history, we have um, passionate and strong youth. So there's a lot of things that uh, we got to take a look at and assess and see what we can come up with, um, with the natural resources and with the human resources that are there. Okay, time. Reg. Um, nation be building begins out on these lands and I feel like the west part of our reservation should be opened up to fracking and we get as much as much fracking and as much of those that oil out of that land um, it's just going to waste 
It's just, we don't know what we're doing with it. And, and that's a big economic uh, opportunity for us as well as creating a new fight. Every time when we have a no dapple fight, a lot of us made a, a millions of dollars and I would like to continue that. So we get two things. We get the fracking on the west side of the res and then we get a fight where we could all, we could all gain in, in uh, economically from that. Our nation building, I think, begins outside of our res. Again, it's the outsiders that have all of the answers for us and the white people. They know what's going on. Let's pay them a shitload of money to figure out our problems. We've tried for, we haven't really tried, but they, they, they know what's going, what's going to work for us. And that's the direction that I feel we should go. Dave, how do you plan to improve the economy on Standing Rock? Just, just so uh, people know from Reg's comments that you know, he's talking about people making millions of dollars off of this uh, DAPO movement. So just for clarity, I never made any money off of this. I never made, uh, I never took any dollars from donations. Uh, all the funds that came into the tribe, we used them for, uh, the, I had the tribal council decide on how they can use them and we used them for the cost of this movement. And tribe, the tribe has expended a lot of money, not only to maintain its uh, business, but to uh, help f facilitate and clean. Um, Did the tribe also approve your mansion in Florida? I don't have a mansion in Florida. I don't have a uh, house in Bismarck. I don't have a house in Mandan. You know, I just, uh, those are accusations that were made by uh, people f uh, on Facebook. Bullshit. Facebook is a real news source. And because they said it on Facebook and it got over 500 likes and 200 shares from a bunch of white people again, I feel like that means it's true. Yes, Dave has mansions in Florida. He has mansions in, in Mandan. I heard he's, he's, he's Kyle Kirschmeyer's freaking neighbor in Mandan and they share a fence and they go to ball games together. And um, we need to look into this shit more, okay? Because, <laughs> see this man said he was about prayer and he's, he's about nonviolence. and look at him being violent right here in a debate. Dave, why did you, why did you evict all those people from the camp? There's a couple things that are, are said. First thing is they, they say, I invited everybody. We never invited people. What we did was we asked for support. We asked for letters of support and we asked the, uh, people that, uh, uh, tribes and organizations, if they'll support us in, um, with letters and resolutions uh, in our fight against this so that we could take those letters of support to Congress and to uh, federal government and to the uh, uh, courts. Uh, so that was, a, that was the extent of asking people uh, for support. But uh, when it came to eviction, you know, the tribe never evicted anybody. Um, if, if you look at how this whole thing played out, it was um, mis a lot of the people that were at the camps were misled by uh, certain individuals who said they own land and the camps are on their land. <coughs> and uh, BIA actually had the documentation to say who actually owns the land and without the permits and uh, another misled information was they had a, a permit or answer for uh, the core land where the core was giving them a lease. Uh, it was a temporary uh, permit to be occupied the core land. Well that never did get filled. So between the core and the BIA uh, they decided to evict the people at the camps, not, not the tribal chairman or the tribal council or the tribe. All we wanted to do was make sure that once people were gone, that we would uh, reclaim the lands to its natural state. Red, do you have anything to say to that? Um, I wasn't really listening to that boring ass answer, but... Do you even know Dapple, bro? You just raided all of the camps and kicked the people all off the land. Shit, have them answer that. How about that? Let's start there. This is this this little debate thing is kind of getting biased, okay? Stacking the deck against me. Um, f you, Rich. Keep up, Rich. Pay attention. Okay, Dave, what are your plans for better health service here on Standing Ground? This oh. is Mike stroking Dave's ego. I'm paying attention. I'm following along. It's just that I'm generations ahead of you guys. Shit. <laughs> So healthcare is something that's really important to our people. You know that uh, our IHS facilities uh, doesn't uh, provide adequate services for the number of health issues that exist, and our health issues start at home. Uh, we have to each and every one of us have to start taking better care of ourselves so that we're not dependent on IHS. But even with IHS, we have uh, capabilities to expand. We you know if we had our own. Uh, cat scanning machine, we wouldn't be referring people and, and spending a lot of our budget in uh, other 
facilities that have that. So we're working on trying to get um, equipment that can provide the services that our members need so we don't have to refer people out. We also have to take a look at uh, this new health care plan that the Trump administration is proposing and the Senate uh, health care plan. You know, there's some good things about it, but there's more bad. So we have to continue to express what is important to us. And, and, and we need to go to D.C. We need to lobby uh, Congress and make sure that uh, if there is a new health care plan, that Indians are not forgotten. Uh, the, the bad with this health care plan is that they're going to eliminate Medicare expansion. Um, the problem with that is our tribe, uh, our IHS facility, since the expansion in 2014, was able to increase revenue for providing services by $2 million. Uh, the bads are they're going to eliminate Medicare. Time, time. Red, same question. Holy shit, you let him ramble on there for a long ass time, man. Um, you got to cut that shit off. Um, healthcare is important. We got to get our people active again. What I propose to do is put some of these miserable, miserable ass old people on these blocks. Everybody runs from them, get them out there. We'll all be running around town, freaking avoiding them. And uh, that's a good way that we could get in front of all this healthcare bullshit and uh, get active. And, and that, that's what I believe and that's what I feel. I, uh, I forgot the question, but I just think that, uh, you know, water is life. Did I say that? Yeah, water is life. Um, it's not water of life, it's water is life. I it just, fuck, man, that's important shit. Dave, do you even know Dapple, bro? <laughs> Dave, a big part of your campaign platform has always been family. Hans Bradley, you call him your brother. Yet you had him clean up after 40,000 people and he didn't even get a water protector medallion. Can you explain that? You know, the, the water protector medallions wasn't something that the tribal council or myself had control over. It was a proposal from Phyllis Young who brought forward something to honor a lot of the people, the celebrities who came to Standing Rock and, and helped build awareness. Um, it wasn't up to us who got the medallions or not. You know, you know, I love Hans. He is my brother and I apologize to him every day for making him clean up the camp, but without him, without his efforts, um, the Morton County, uh, the Corps of Engineers, everybody will be claiming uh, that they paid for everything. But we put a lot of money towards the cleanup of the camp. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, with the medallions, that wasn't, that wasn't uh, the tribe, that was uh, Phyllis Young. And, and she, if you had questions about the medallion, you could ask her where they went. Uh, the tribal council did, she wanted to honor the tribal council, so she gave every one of the tribal council members a medallion and the tribal council passed them on to one of the protectors that they liked. Do you have one? I passed mine on to somebody who I thought was a water protector, who rode horse. But not Hans, huh? Not Hans, Hans didn't get one. I think EPA and I think the tribal council has been reimbursed enough for those teepee poles, the generators that they stole, and those yurts that they all stole from, from, from the, um, the camp up there. And well, my, my plan and my party is I believe that medallions for all. I think that everyone should have a medallion for the tribal council. And we, pay, we should pay a shitload of money for someone to do that and then just give them all out. So I've been handing out medallions for people who will vote for me. Dave's gonna vote for me now, so so if you didn't see me, come see me, I'll give you a medallion. Reg, law enforcement. Is it Hold on, I wanna, I wanna respond to Reg's comment there. You know, um, the tribe never did take any generators. Uh, we don't have generators. All of the, all the stuff that was uh, confiscated was either by uh, the law enforcement, the Corps of Engineers, and the stuff that we took from EPA, we had it uh, stored at the jungle and uh, the tribal programs allowed for, um, I don't remember his name, a, a guy that had a movement at other camps looking for supplies and uh, he wanted to, the teepee poles and he wanted uh, whatever there was that the tribe was able to salvage. Because uh, if we didn't salvage it, um, Morton County or uh, the Corps of Engineers was planning on just uh, destroying a lot of it. So. What we salvaged, we gave to um, other camps. Uh, they have it, tribe doesn't have anything, but the stuff that was left 
was left because um, there was a notice given. A notice was given by the BIA, a notice was given by the Corps of Engineers to take uh, your stuff, your belongings, whatever it is, out because they're no longer going to be allowed after a certain date to be on those grounds. And if you didn't take them, that was um, your responsibility. And it's not the tribes or mine. And, and like I said, I didn't, we don't have any of the, the property that's left. So, I disagree. He said that uh, it's your responsibility. I feel that the tribe is responsible for every bad thing in my life and every hardship that I've ever gotten. Um, it's the council's fault. They were supposed to take care of me and they're supposed to give me a stipend just for being alive. And I think it's bullshit that they don't do this for, for us as a people. Okay, and uh, let me rebut his rebuttal of my great and amazing answer that I gave, you know. Everyone knows I give the best answers. I'm the smartest Indian. I'm the best Indian. I'm the handsomest Indian. I'm the longest Indian. I know the most stories. Shit, I have the best beadwork. I have the best braid, the best blood pressure out of anyone. I know this. You know it. He knows it over there. They all know it back there. And uh, I, I just think that because Dave's been losing in the polls, this totally unbiased poll that I got from Twitter from this uh, Reg and Friends account, says that I'm leading in the polls. It says, Reg, all dreams come true. 71% of people want, that, want to make that happen. 29% is voting for our shamble and hates Indians. And I'm pretty sure those are white people that are voting for him. And they can't even vote in our election, all right? So yeah, I think this, I think this, this Mike guy is really favoring this guy, all right? I think it's bullshit. And I think we need a new moderator. Thanks. Reg, tell us about your plans to contract Standing Rock's public safety services to Morton County. Great idea. You took the words out of my mouth, okay? Morton County knows how to, f how to f scare Indians. And that's what we need out here is a bunch of scared, crazy-ass Indians, all right? Maybe, maybe they won't trample my garden anymore. I don't know. Um, and I, I just think that we need to get rid of these BIAs and these, these tribal cops and, and get these Morton Counties down here because... Yeah, man, they don't, they don't play no games, and I like that, and I'm not a game player at all. I don't play any games. I haven't played a game since Super Mario, like 10 years ago. Dave, how do you feel about his, his answer for law enforcement? I don't think law enforcement starts with uh, Morton County. I think it starts at home. Uh, each and every one of us need to start taking a look at our, our own families and what we can do to uh, provide safety for them, and then it can extend on to the uh, BIA and uh, trying to get more resources for BIA. Uh, lobby Congress again, lobby the administration to get resources for BIA so that we can um, uh, assure adequate health care, <laughs> no, <laughs> adequate law enforcement. Reg, talk to us about GoFundMe account. I think it's the next best and the best thing for Stanley Rock's economy. That's everyone needs to get a GoFundMe account, all right? Let's, all this economic development, all of this freaking investing in this, trying this shit out, this, this business stuff, it's all about the GoFundMe's, baby. You know, uh, there's, there's some people who became millionaires off of this no dapple fight. We also need another fight. Let's build as many crises as we can, and we could all become crisis pimps and just ball out, baby. That's what I think, you know, GoFundMe's. Um, this, these guys have played out tri trials and shit. It doesn't work, you know? I, they haven't been giving me any money that I feel I deserve. Like I said before in my previous question, just for being alive, I think I should, I should be balling out and, and get a stipend just for being a Standing Rock member. So I'd like, hit, I'd like to hear his rebuttal on this point. <laughs> I think you know, GoFundMe Go is a, um, a resource, but I, think, I don't think it is the resource or the answer. It's something that we have to um, keep in mind whenever there's a, a need for where gaps can't be filled. But I think we, we have to... I think where the gaps could be filled, excuse me, Dave, Mr. Ashamble, Mr. Um, um, what, what Dapple Dave said is that I think that we should start fracking the hell out of that western part. Like I said before, and I'll say this again, um, it's about extracting as much water or oil resources to rebuild our Lakota way of life. That's, that's how I see it, okay? We get all this money, and we could have $200,000 powwows, and we could, um, we could pay all these, these, these medicine men, and, and we could get new Lakota languages, and, and you know, and we could start our own Lakota language dialect. How about that? Our own Lakota language, our sub-language of, of whatever these guys are speaking and make it our own. That's what I think, and it all starts with oil. It all starts with the west side of our oil and fracking the shit out of that baby. Drill, baby, drill. 
think that's what that, uh, that one crazy lady from Alaska said, and I really agree with that. Well, I disagree with Ridge. I think that uh, fracking only dis uh, kills the land, and it's not gonna, something that we can uh, no afford lives anymore. Out there. Nobody lives out uh, there. So we could use other means to develop, such as wind or, or solar renewable resources that can be developed in areas where... We're not going to be here in the next generations, you know, so it doesn't matter. It matters it to, matter. it matters to uh, keep this planet alive. But we're not going to be here anyway. Dave, let's talk about education. What do you feel is the solution to education on Standing Rock? Education is something that we have to do. Uh, we have to have say for our own. A lot of times, we let the, the money that comes from D.C., the money that comes from the state, dictate on how we teach our own. Uh, we have to start standing up and saying, uh, we want to educate our kids and we want to explore alternative education methods. Uh, we could look at um, Montessori or uh, we could look at um, trades, uh, anything that would... That would uh okay, time. Reg, same question. Um, what Thin Braid said here was, uh, it, uh, I'm gonna have to use one of my lifelines, Mike. Oh, he gets lifelines? He gets three of them. Who are you calling, Rich? I'm calling, uh, Smudge Bear, my spiritual advisor. He'll know what to say about this. Anytime now. Howdy, Howdy Smudge Bear! Yeah, Smudgy, um, Education on Standing Rock. What do you think? You're 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 on the cameras right now, so keep it G-rated. Amen, brother. Amen. White man's way. That's a white man's way. Piece of paper. That's all it is. Piece of paper. White man's way. All right, all right, thanks, Smudge Bear. I had to cut you off, bro. Um, yeah, see, this guy has his education. I got one question. You think you're better than me now? <laughs> no, I don't. You think you're better than me because you got a piece of paper? No. What f***ing tribe is Smudge Bear from? <laughs> I think Smudge Bear is Dave's neighbor down in Florida. <laughs> hey, Dave, what does sovereignty mean to you? Sovereignty is, uh... Okay, your time is up. Reg. Thanks a lot, Mike. I was getting a lot, little long-winded there. Um, what sovereignty means, I'm sure... Vote is, Reg. Vote thanks. Reg. Thank you. What, what, thank you, buddy. What, what, what I think sovereignty means is... Sovereignty is a big, long word, and it has a lot of syllables. And, and I think that the, um, it's... I don't really know what the definition is, but I, I think it's in the dictionary. Um, and George Bush, we should ask George Bush. He probably knows what sovereignty is. I, I, um, I think that, you know, um, what Sitting Bull said. You know, Sitting Bull said that a nation built on um, basketball and uh, um, GoFundMes and, and that he would vote for Reg. I, I think that, um, thanks, Sitting Bull. Thank you for all that you've done. Dave, Dave, there's a lot of talk about your homes in Florida, your homes in, in Bismarck, when right here on Standing Rock, there's a shortage, shortage of housing for your people. What do you plan on doing about that? First, again, I don't have any homes in Florida or Bismarck or Mandan, regardless of what Reg says. You know, that's, that's not true. Facebook uh, said it. Facebook is not always true. true. No, it's true. No. It's got a lot of likes, a lot of shares. 
Just because you get likes don't mean it's true. But, you know, you got um, a lot of houses that are, are here on Standing Rock, and we're working with the Housing Authority to try to uh, make sure that the houses, the units are repaired and up uh, so they're being used, as well as exploring um, alternative housing, uh, new housing, uh, getting houses so that people can own them. Hang around the Fort Dave knows a lot about housing. Why? Ask him. Okay. What I saw on Facebook is that he got a whole new siding Ooh. on his gas station. Did you guys see that? That was all from no dapple funds. Okay. He built up his house, his, his, his gas station in Cannonball with whole new siding. And that comes from a really reputable source on Facebook. That gets a lot of likes and shares. Again, that's not true, Rich. No, I never did get siding for my store with the DAPL funds. This was something that we had planned over a year prior to any movement. And we even had to be put on a list. And it was a year long waiting list. And before anything ever even started, we started the process to get siding on our store. It just so happened that when the camp was closing, uh, there was an opening for the siding to be put on. And we, we're, we're not changing who we are. We're gonna continue with, so that's not true. Not everything on Facebook is true, Rich. I disagree. Um, I'm pretty popular on Facebook and I get a lot of likes and I think that's that I'm better than you. Dave, today during our debate there's been a lot of talk about Facebook. You know with everything that happened here on Standing Rock with the camp, with Dapple, there wasn't a lot of national media but there was a lot of you know individuals with their phones, individuals posting things on Facebook, a lot of local media. What are your what are your thoughts on on media and the way things are, are put out to the world today? Well, I think with uh, Facebook and with uh, phones, you know, the, a phone is a good tool, uh, but just having a phone doesn't make you a reporter. Uh, reporters uh, usually try to get the facts, and that's why with Facebook, not everything is true because they're alternative facts. Uh, same thing happened to me when, when we had this uh, crew came, the Rock Report, who Reg really endorses. They really don't get the factual information out. They, they took, take, took the time to cut and splice and, and create alternative facts, which ultimately created a division uh, between the tribe and the movement. So the facts are, are not always reported when you have a tool, when you have a phone or when you have a, a camera. Uh, it's important that, that you make sure you get everybody's true perspective rather than uh, making up stuff. So for example, there was a, um, a crew, Reg's, Reg's film crew, Rock Report, came by and they wanted to interview me and they, they uh, asked me what Minimichoni is. So I said water, uh, I said Minimichoni does not mean Water is life. It means water is a source of life. Just like the sun is a source of life, just like the earth is a source of life, just like the air is a source of life. If we don't have one of those, uh, we won't live. So we have to be mindful of that and protect every one of those elements. But when they, they took the interview, the only thing they cut out is, the only thing they put in their video is when I said water is not, water, Miniwichoni does not mean water is life. And they left all the rest of the, stuff out and they said that I was the worst spokesperson for the tribe and that's fine. You know, that's, if that's who Reg wants to endorse, that's, he can endorse them. Social media is not always factual. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna send that same question to Reg, but Reg, I wanna add a little bit to it. How important are facts to a story? Um, facts are, you know, facts, facts are, are, made up a lot of times. I, I feel uh, social media is a good place where you can kind of, um, you can be what you want. You, I became a warrior on social media, you know, without really doing shit with my life. But I became a warrior on social media with the camera. And uh, I showed myself at home a few times, but I had a couple of uh, snow plows in the back of my yard and I just kind of made it look like I was at camp and it was pretty awesome. But um, I, I got a lot of uh, white women to like it. Facebook is factual. I became a social media warrior on Facebook. I earned a lot of digital feathers from a guy named Brian Louie. 
David doesn't even know what he's talking about. He doesn't even have a Facebook. The Stafford movement brought thousands of people to the Standing Rock Reservation. What did you learn from that? And what can the Standing Rock Sioux tribe do to help other tribes in similar situations? Well, first, Mike, I just want to say that uh, we were thankful for all the support that we got from other tribes. And if there's something that we can do to assist, if there's some lessons that we learned that we can pass forward, uh, we can, you know, there's a lot of fights that are going. There's, lot, there's this Line 7 in, in uh, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, there's also the Tohono O'odham uh, tribe. This new administration is trying to build a, a wall uh, between Mexico and the U.S. And the Tohono O'odham tribe has family that lives in Mexico and they have a, a, a desire to stop this. So if there's anything that the Standing Rock Sioux tribe can do uh, to share any lessons or support, uh, we'd be more than willing to. Enough, Jesus. I would like to propose a wall right here, right now. We've got fights right here, right now. We need a wall that separates the North Dakota side from the South Dakota side. It's damn time we had that, okay? Um, and we need extreme vetting. We don't, let, let's go back and see all of these, all of these freaking terrorists in, in our tribes, all right? These Rose Butters, these Cheyenne Rivers, these Oglalas, okay? I'm married to a Rosebud woman. She's a real nasty woman. And we need to get these people out of here and make Standing Rock great again and make the South Dakota side great again. That don't even make sense, building a wall in North Dakota South. It's too expensive. We can't even afford to build one in, uh, be, to separate Mexico and the United States. Who's gonna pay for this wall that you're planning on building? The North Dakota side will. I'll make them pay for it. Okay, candidates, I want to thank you for, for taking this time out of your busy campaign schedules to, to visit with us today. It's at that point where we're going to allow you each to, to do a closing statement. Dave, you'll have a minute. Reg, take all the time you like. Well, I just want to uh, thank you. For thank okay, you. that's that's good. We I think we heard enough today. Reg. Thanks, Mike. I've been sick of hearing him too. Um, I'm going above and beyond for the people of Standing Rock. Okay? Most of these other candidates, they just hung up signs. I'm actually doing a debate, all right? And I'm representing the election time party, where we only show up around election time, and the other three and a half years, you won't be seeing us. Um, and I propose a 10 hour work week for all of our employees and give admin whenever you can, especially for whatever dumb shit you need it for. Um, I'm pissed at Dave. I'm pissed at Dave. He ruined my life out at camp. I was having a good time. I was kind of drunk half the time. I was a little high. I had a gear going. I had white women lined up without a condom within a hundred miles of that place. And I had my main guy, Smudgy Bear, ready with his herbals and his shit to take care of me with whatever happened. And, and he came in there and he raided that stuff. And he, and he took my yurt and he took my GoFundMe. And my GoFundMe is uh, it's allowed me to travel this world. It's allowed me to take, to buy my friends houses. It's allowed me to go all over, New York and Hawaii and wherever. This no dapple fight made me a multimillionaire and I'm pretty pissed at Dave for stopping that, all right? So vote for me, vote Reg. I'll be whoever you need me to be. I don't have those sticky problems like morals and principles that'll get in the way, okay? Let's, let's, uh, let's make light, uh, Standing Rock great. Let's make Standing Rock great again. Cattle is life. And I just want to say thanks for, thanks for uh, my main man here. Moderating this thing. Vote Reg. Let's make Standing Rock great again. Thank you. Tonight I thank all of you for being here. In the future, when you have grandchildren, you know, one day they're going to ask, where were you during the rumble on the rock? And you can tell them you was right here watching. I know some of you are probably let down because, you know, I didn't sing those championship songs I used to win United Tribe singing contests with just a hand drum. You know, we didn't show clips of my basketball or football days. But tonight was about the people of the Standing Rock Reservation. Tonight was about their future and the person who's going to lead them to it. You know, I just want to, I want to thank Reg for um, uh, bringing humor. Uh, to this campaign. This humor is something that uh, 
always help tribes and uh, Indians make it through difficult times. Uh, we have to keep, yes, I want everyone to know that this is uh, all in fun. You know, I, I respect uh, Reg and I'm thankful for uh, what he's doing and bringing this, bringing this around and thank everybody for being a part of this. Thank Mike for moderating it. Let you know, Reg, I respect you. <laughs> Love you, Reg. It's all good fun. <laughs> this fucker's still talking? Bro, shut the fuck up. And one more thing. Dave brought Obama here. That socialist Obama. One more thing. Obama's not even an American. One more thing. If I don't win, I'm going to be campaigning in Rosebud next year. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>